Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to design and make more sustainable products with Fusion 360 using the new Maker Site add-in. Before we jump into this video, let's cover a few things. Firstly, sustainability and sustainable design. So how do we define this? Sustainability refers to practices that meet the present need without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It encompasses environmental conservation, responsible resource usage, social equity, and economic efficiency. When it comes to sustainable design and manufacturing, you're heading in the right direction if you focus on four main areas, using less materials, better materials, less energy, and better energy to design and make your products. Why is it so important, and how does it impact you as an engineer using Fusion 360? Well, as engineers, you design and build the world around us. From the buildings we live in, the cars we drive, to the water bottles we drink from, the solutions we as engineers create serve a purpose, but not without an impact to the environment. Therefore, it is our responsibility to ensure whatever we design, we design to have a minimised impact from the get-go. This sentiment is echoed by studies and research. The Infrastructure Carbon Review identified that 80% of a product emissions are locked in within the design phase of product development. Therefore, when you start the design in Fusion 360, your decisions of the design and the materials have a huge impact on that product's carbon footprint once it's been manufactured and operational. Governments are starting to see this as well. And within the design and manufacturing industries, designers and engineers will start seeing external forces, making sure products are designed with sustainability in mind. Government regulations, consumer demands, access to capital, and the need for supply chain resiliency is positioning sustainability practices as a non-negotiable. Now this is where the new Makersite add-in for Fusion 360 comes in. Makersite enables designers to make high conviction decisions on carbon and cost in real time by leveraging sustainability insights within Fusion 360's design workspace. Designers can calculate the environmental and economical impact of their design and seek material replacement recommendations. These insights can be obtained in a table format or through heat map visualization. The add-in also enables historical comparisons and CSV report exporting. This add-in is available for free on the Autodesk App Store and I'll provide the App Store link in the description below. Now let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you how Makersite can be added to your product design workflows to ensure that you're creating more sustainability conscious products. Now we're in Fusion 360, we're going to look into how we can use Makersite to optimize the design of this laptop stand. Let's go into the Utilities tab, click our Connect Makersite button. This pop-up for Makersite comes up and we're able to send our bill of materials which takes all of our components and bodies from our design in our assembly and sends it to the Makersite backend, calculates its carbon and cost and brings it back to us. And we can see here now in real time how we have a breakdown of our total CO2 emissions, our CO2 emissions if we were to replace it with different materials and what our cost should be to manufacture this component. The table view in the Makersite add-in takes all of our components and bodies that are in our Fusion 360 file and displays it here in the Makersite add-in. And what this enables us to do is to understand which component is made from what material, what that mass of the material is, and what the carbon footprint of that component is. Makersite also gives us different material suggestions and how much CO2 we could save with each of those material changes. If we take the uh, front support here that's made from a polycarbonate or an ABS as an example, uh, make a site suggesting that we use polypropylene or a thermoplastic or a PT to reduce that impact. You can then apply those materials to the model using the apply selection. Now let's go into the cost tab of the add-in. What this does is it gives you a should cost value, a material cost value, and a manufacturing cost value of all of the different components and bodies that you have in your assembly and your Fusion 360 file. And the reason why this is so important is it gives you a side-by-side -side understanding of what the cost and carbon impact of your component is going to be so that you can make the right call when optimizing your design. The heat map view that we can see here is great if you have a large assembly. So if you're working with something that has lots of different components that are hidden, you can see which component corresponds to the highest cost and carbon value. And in this case, it's the support struts that we have. They're made out of aluminium. 
If you have a big assembly and some of these parts are hidden, you can use the explode view to be able to pinpoint which component which is hidden has the biggest carbon contribution. The cost tab in the heat map view does the same thing. It highlights which areas are the most expensive to create in your assembly. And again, you can see that the support struts here are the most expensive. However, that front section of the laptop stand is creeping up into the, the cost aspect. We can go into the historic view to see how our designs have changed over time and what the carbon and cost impact has been from them. So this is great to keep track of as you're making design changes, how is that influencing your overall uh, CO2 impact and manufacturing cost as well. Let's exit this Maker's Light add-on and make some changes to those aluminium struts that we've identified as the key carbon culprit. So we've got our initial product design, these are the values for it. Let's make some changes. Let's do some manual light weighting to those struts to reduce the embodied carbon of them. Go into Fusion and let's resubmit that bill of materials. We can see what impact that has now had to the values associated with those struts and the overall assembly of our laptop stand. Great, there we go, we've got them back. We can see that there's a slight reduction of around three kilograms of global warming potential. We can still make some changes with material replacements and the costs have gone down by around a dollar. Looking at the table view, those struts are still the main contributor with almost around three kilograms of CO2 per, per one. And the cost as well, it's, um, it's getting there, but it's not perfect. And I think we could probably do another iteration here. Let's go into the heat map view just to focus and see which areas are the main contributors if anything has changed. But yeah, these struts are still the main contributor, but that front section is getting closer. So we need to keep an eye out on that. And from a carbon standpoint, those two struts are the main contributors. We're making good progress here. Uh, the design history shows that every iteration we're making reductions in both cost and carbon, but there's definitely room for improvement. And I think we could leverage other aspects of Fusion 360 to optimize this design from both a structural and a material efficiency standpoint. So we've done the initial product design, manual light weighting. Let's see what generative design can do with this situation. I've passed the design on to a generative design engineer and they've created this outcome for me. Generative design is a great tool for this kind of situation because we can make sure that it can withstand the load cases applied to it whilst minimizing the material required, making a more carbon efficient outcome that can withstand load cases and has a minimized cost as well. Now we can use MakerSite to validate these claims. Let's send this bill of material to the back end and see what the impact has been from a carbon and cost standpoint. We can see that it has reduced it further. We've gone down to 6.27 kilograms of global warming potential. There's still some reduction that we can do by implementing new materials, and the cost is also reduced as well. Now that we've optimized these struts, let's see in the heat map view what are the next key contributors from a carbon and cost standpoint, and think about how we could improve them as well. We can see that the struts are still the main contributor, but we've optimized them in such a way that we should probably shouldn't focus on them. The next two things are these polymer supports that we have on the laptop stand. And we can see that this lower section is probably where we need to make the most changes to optimize it from both a cost and carbon standpoint. If we check the historic view, we can see that we're getting there. We, we've gone down to almost six kilograms of CO2 and $3 of cost. There's fi one final thing that we can do with this front support, and that's change its material and use the recommended material. At the moment, it's made from polycarbonate or ABS, but MakerSite is suggesting that we use a polypropylene instead to reduce it by about 75% of its global warming potential. So MakerSite add-in now allows us to apply this material to our model in Fusion 360, ensuring that our design changes have been saved. We can now see that it's been applied to the model and we can now save this model and resend the bill of materials to make a site to see how that's impacted the overall global warming potential of our assembly. There we go, the bomb has been updated and you can see it's now dropped to under six kilograms of CO2. We still have some reduction that we can do by implementing those suggested materials. However, for this design phase, I believe that this is an optimized part now that we've reached below that six kilogram threshold. 
If you want to integrate Makersite into your downstream workflows as well, you can export this whole table view as a CSV file using the export button. This should enable you to import this data into any third party solutions that you have. If you end up downloading this add-in and want to give us feedback, you can do that directly on the Makersite add-in. This is really helpful for us to understand how our users can see this adding value to their design and manufacturing workflows and how we can make it a better app in the future. To conclude this video, we've now gone from an initial product design, done manual light weighting and applied two axis generative design to take our part from 10 kilograms of CO2e to under six kilograms of global warming potential. And this really shows how Makersite can be added to your design to make workflows to make sure that you're producing products that are more sustainable and have less impact on the planet. Thank you for watching and feel free to let us know what you think of this new Makersite add-in in the comments below. Cheers.